Welcome to monthly news number 15. 15 already, wow. So this month I released Story Hopper season two. A lot of new videos, if you haven't checked them, make sure you do. My personal favorite is the dark side of data and the fuel of electric cars. And there's one more to come, which precious plasticers will probably like. And these Story Hopper videos were a bit different than usual. Wait, let me show you. This is flawed. They don't make any money from you consumer data. That theory is absolutely false. Haha, <laughs> so wrong. That's the problem with design education. No sense of complexity at all, no logic. Your ignorance and pretentiousness astonish me. You should have stayed with your plastic stuff. You're a dreamer and a little bit naive too. These recent topics have been really weird and doesn't seem right to me. Why do you make these weird surprisingly informed videos lately? I love the first season of Story Hopper, but this new season has some really bad points. All right, I would say the most hated video is my perspective on profit. It's just my perspective, but sure. And it's true, these ones are different. Usually story opera videos are easier and difficult to disagree with. I mean, it's nice if a guy goes to a landfill and shows to other people, or if he picks up beach plastic. However, they also just address a problem on the surface. They don't really go to the root of it. I think Adriar sums it up pretty good. I really like the post-capitalistic Dave Hackens version 4. That's nice. Still looking to see if awards keep coming in now that we're getting to the root causes of these shitstorms. I think that's a valid point. This stuff is just less popular. People don't like having resistance. However, I think it's crucial to do this and let me tell you why. See, I think we need to understand our world better where we live in, the infrastructure around us. And this is a completely different reality depending on where you live. I mean, it's completely different in Kenya and Thailand, South America or in the US. And I come from the Netherlands, a very well-developed country. And this makes me part of a small group of privileged people in the world. And looking at my YouTube stats, you most likely come from Australia, US or Europe, a developed country as well. And I truly believe all humans are good from within. They all do their own best with the energy and knowledge they have to be a decent person. Whether it's saving energy, trying to reduce the amount of plastic they use, or not throwing away food, stuff like that. And sometimes you do harm without really knowing it, just because you're part of a very wasteful system. I mean, just looking at myself, the concrete building I live in, or the electricity I need to power up the lights, maybe not my own, but even outside on the streets, or the globally shipped products I can buy, I like it simple banana and more often i don't even realize all of this stuff it's normal but it's not it's actually a luxury but just because i'm part of this system with all this luxury it also means i leave a huge footprint and the developed world is actually just a small group of people in the world but the amount of damage they create is pretty big now we don't choose in which system we start our lives but we do choose in the one we end up and i think it's time to fix these faulty systems now these videos are all about discussing it, exposing these problems, talk about it and see if we can think of a better solution. But another crucial part is also to actually try it out, prototype that world, figuring out that system and test it. And that is what we're gonna do next month. But that's for later. Now, so making all these videos takes an incredible amount of time. Not, not these monthly news updates, but the story hopper ones, because they're 100% made by me. I need to do the research, dive into the topic, go on spot, film it on my own in the middle of the desert, edit, animate, camera work, rebuild my entire workspace to record a shot. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but I like it. However, there's one last final step which I absolutely don't like. I don't have the energy to do it and I just, I don't know. But it's so crucial and it's making sure the video is actually being seen. The only thing I do is upload it on YouTube and show it to my own little bubble. It's so much more powerful when it goes beyond, when people that are into cars actually see the fuel of electric cars video, or people that consume a lot of data show them the dark side of data video. Which means going onto these website and niche communities on the internet to, I don't know, ask them to write a post about it or post the topic in the forums. And again, this is something I absolutely don't like to do. So if you ever wanted to help out with this project, please do that step. Don't do it for this monthly news updates. Those are crappy. These ones are just for you, but do it for the story hopper videos. 
those are the ones that need to be shared and inform other people. Okay, that's enough. Now some other news. So this month I was featured in the Vogue Man, which is kind of weird knowing that I always have dirty clothes with holes in it. Well, sure, cool. But that picture itself was actually one of my best liked pictures ever on Instagram. I mean, you make all these videos, but that picture is the one that has all these likes and shares. Come on, guys. Maybe I should just focus on modeling or something. And Ben from New Zealand, also known as NZ Chicken, has rebuilt our precious plastic map and it now runs completely open source on OpenStreetMaps. And remember that shopping window we did a few months back at the bike of in Amsterdam, where we put this shopping window full of plastic trash to make a statement that plastic is valuable. All right, All right so keep that in mind. So every year in April this month, there is this big design fair in Milan in Italy and this is top notch, where the best of the worlds go. It's all about new ideas, originality and authenticity. I have this famous lady that runs a big gallery there, Rosanna, who made a shopping window full of plastic trash with some text written on it. Now that looks similar. <laughs> no worry Rosanna, we're all open source, do as you want. And finally, here's a nice clip of Mattia going to Morocco to help out the guys there to extrude plastic beams. Hello community, so today I'm here in Morocco uh, with the guys from Kuhn and we've been here for the past 10-14 uh, days to, to work together to try and uh, help them improve their processes and make beams more efficiently so that they can really set up a small production here in Casablanca, Morocco. And uh, let me show you what we've done for the past uh, couple of weeks. So one of the main things that we've been focusing on in, during these two weeks has been to really try and clean up this uh, workspace so that they can work more efficiently. We made a nice display for all the beams that they've been making in the last few days and a tool area, a mold making area as well as all the plastic where they chop the plastic and uh, sort it by color and by type as well as all the space for the machine. So here is a compression machine, nicely labeled. The extrusion machine, which is now ours, but it works on the same uh, uh, concept. And they use it for making beams. So on top of uh, making the workspace more efficient and uh, properly set up, we've also been really focusing on making beams. And I will let uh, Mohammed explain what we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. So uh, we start to working with beams. We do uh, many experiments. So uh, we get different texture, different, different color, different shape, and we start to uh, make some products. So as you can see here, we've been uh, uh, trying to put together a little bench as a showcase of the possibilities, of the huge possibilities of uh, working with beams, 100% recycled beams. Uh, this all comes from waste that is collected in the area and uh, we are very happy with the end result. 